Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy, for anyone that is new around here, and I have another coloured pencil tutorial for you. Today we're going to be drawing a rabbit in coloured pencils. Just quickly, if you would like to check out my Patreon, I do have a link to that down below. I have the full tutorial for this over on my Patreon. It's a four hour video narrated from start to finish. If you think you might be interested in my Patreon, I have the link down below like I said, and also I have the web address on the screen right now. But let's jump in and the first thing that I like to do is just make sure that I have an accurate initial sketch of the drawing on the paper. And any areas that are a little bit dark with the sketch, I just use a kneaded eraser to lift up some of the pencil. The first thing I like to do is I like to use the black Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil and what I do is I just start by outlining the eye of the rabbit. I am using Polychromos pencils for the whole of this video and I'm also using the buff titanium from the Luminance set. I start by outlining the eye of the rabbit first and I do this just because it really helps to make sure that I know where all the values are, the shadows are and then I just start to include some other colours. So as you can see there I'm just sort of adding in a lot of black where I feel there needs to be a lot of contrast and values and also in the rabbit's eye there was a lot of blue hues obviously where the sun hits the pupil you get a lot of those blue tinges in the eye. I also used the buff titanium to make sure that I got the highlight of the rabbit's eye as well and I just added and increased those values as much as I could and obviously looked at the reference photo to help me with this as well. Then I start to work on the fur around the rabbit's eye so I start with the sort of waterline area and for the waterline I used some light grey so I used the cold grey 1 and 2 and I also used the light flesh and medium flesh as well because in the waterline a lot of animals and people and things they do actually have a lot of fleshy tones in the waterline. So I just like to use a combination of those colours and I start by sort of really soft shading and then as I start to increase the values I start to apply a lot more shading and just burnish those colours into the paper. For the fur texture what I like to do is I like to start by using a darker colour so for this I am using the warm grey 5 and 6 and what I'm doing is starting to just indent where the fur texture is and the main fur growth and details. I like to use sharp pencils and that is really essential that you use sharp pencils because as I said you know fur texture is very very detailed so you want to make sure that you're using sharp pencils to really reflect the natural growth and detail of fur. As I start to get in the main indentations of the fur I then start to go in and add in my under layers. And for the under layers, I'm using the buff titanium, the cream, and some of the light flesh. And what you're going to see is that those lighter areas are going to show through. Then working around the fur, I'm using again the warm grey 5 and 6 and also the dark sepia. And I'm just working very slowly on the fur around the rabbit's eye. The main thing with this reference photo was that the direction of the fur changed quite a lot so that is something that you really do need to look out for if you are drawing a rabbit or an animal like this is that you want to make sure that you are accurately getting in that fur. 
So the three main things that you want to be looking for in the reference photo is number one, the direction in the fur. So see how the directions changed quite a lot and it's sort of going in lots of different directions. You want to make sure that you're accurately representing that because if you start drawing the fur, say straight and it's actually curly or wavy, you're going to get a very unrealistic result. The other thing that you want to focus on is the length of the fur. So again, if you have a short furred animal, you want to be using very short pencil strokes. If you're drawing longer fur, you want to start using longer pencil strokes. And that again just helps to mimic that fur length. Another thing that you want to be looking at is definitely the position and also the fur growth itself, so the sort of thickness of the fur. If you've got very, very thick fur, you're going to want to be using a lot of fur details and shading just combined together. If it's very sparse fur, you're going to have a lot of lighter tones showing through. And all the time that I'm drawing this fur, I'm making sure that I just build up that fur growth really slowly and gradually. And I just keep adding in more and more pencil details as I start to thicken out that fur. I also start from light values to dark values as well. So you'll see me using a combination of both light values, so the light greys, going into the mid values, so sort of incorporating some hints of flesh tones and also brown tones, and then going in finally with those darker values. Again, like I said, using a lot of the dark warm greys, also the dark sepia and the black pencil as well. So for the ears, what I like to start by doing is I like to shade in some fleshy tones definitely because there are going to be a lot of flesh tones in the ears. And I use a combination of techniques here because obviously we have some fur growth in the ear but also we have a lot of soft and subtle shading in the ear as well. So I just use a combination of subtle shading by using the side of the pencil and then using the tip of the pencil and just making sure that I get in some more specific and detailed areas of the fur as well. One thing that really helps with this sort of process, especially if I'm drawing ears that have sort of like white or really light fur in, is that I'll often use an embossing tool and I'll just indent the paper slightly and then that just preserves those areas. If you don't have a embossing tool, you can use a sharp white pencil for that as well. Again, I'm just making sure that with the ears, I'm just gradually increasing my values and I'm also putting in details where it needs it as well. But anyway, that just about finishes off this tutorial. I really hope you did enjoy this one. And as I said, I have the four hour version narrated from start to finish over on my Patreon. If you'd like to check that out, the link is in the description. Anyway, if you are new around here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you'll be notified of all my future uploads. I upload art related videos every single week and I'd love to have you around and joining in on all the fun on my channel. Anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy this one. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys!